Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp, more specifically the Windows Privilege Escalation section of the Bootcamp. So we're going to be continuing from where we left off uh, after we performed the Pass the Hash attack or after we actually explored the process of performing the Pass the Hash attack. And of course, we also explored uh, the process of extracting uh, NDLM hashes from the SAM database, right? So we're currently, we currently only have, I think, about you know, three, uh, sorry, actually four to five videos left. And um, I'll be looking to complete this so that we can actually continue with the web app pen testing series and, uh, you know, turn our attention to Linux exploitation, post exploitation and privilege escalation. All right. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to elevate our privileges by, uh, you know, taking advantage of or exploiting misconfigured scheduled tasks, right? And uh, again, you can access this room for free on Try Hack Me. It's uh, again, as I said, it's a really great resource to actually, you know, get up to scratch with the various Windows privilege escalation techniques. So I've already obtained RDP access on the target, which uh, is pretty much required. And I've obtained, uh, as you can see, a meterpreter session on the target as well. And this is an unprivileged session. So I can type in, you know, get use ID and of course get privs. And you can see that I have uh, the lowest amount of privileges associated, uh, you know, on associated with this account. So if we take a look at the documentation here. You can see that uh, the, the actual it actually tells us to view the contents of the directory dev tools and more specifically a PowerShell script called cleanup.ps1. All right. So we can actually explore that. And it says right over here, the script seems to be running as system every minute. Using access check, uh, note that you have the ability to write uh, or make changes to this file. Okay, so what's happening here is in a typical uh, scenario, you could, uh, you know, the actual uh, scheduled task could be in the form of an executable, uh, a batch script or a PowerShell script, right? And in this case, it's a PowerShell script, which makes it much easier to modify. So uh, the other thing to note is that it's running as this uh, as system, right? Which means it's running with the highest, uh, the highest privileges available on a Windows system, which is, uh, you know, anti authority system. So uh, again, these are really the two requirements. In this case is that you either need to be able to modify the um, the actual uh, scheduled task file itself or the executable, or you know, you can actually try and replace it as we've, uh, we've done before. So, uh, and of course, we need to have a scheduled task that is running uh, with system privileges so that when we get it to execute something, and in this case, a meterpreter payload, uh, that payload will be executed with system privileges. So the first step, of course, is to, uh, again, you know, just analyze the contents of the cleanup PowerShell script. So what I'll do here is I'll navigate, let me just check out my current working directory, and I'll navigate to the root of the C drive, and I'll open up a command shell session here. And uh, we should be able to access the contents of the dev folder. Let me just confirm that. So dev tools, so dir, and you can see we have dev tools, right? So I'll say cd dev tools. Uh, let me type that in correctly. There we are. And listing that out, you can see we have cleanup.ps1. Okay, so we can use the type command to essentially display, you know, the contents of it. So cleanup.ps1. Hit enter. And you can see that, uh, again, it gives you a, a very good documentation. It says that this script will clean up all your uh, old dev logs every minute to avoid permission issues, run this as system, which makes sense, right? And this is something that you might find, especially on Windows Server systems, uh, you know, because, you know, Windows Server, like, uh, you know, like Linux, if it's been configured to run as a server, then you'll typically have scripts that automate, uh, that automate a lot of things. And, you know, the, uh, the actual replacement, or you can compare this to cron jobs on Linux, right? Where if we were to elevate our privileges through cron jobs, we would try and identify a cron job or a batch, uh, a bash script that is uh, being used by a cron job, try and modify it if we have the permissions. And if we can, we can get it to execute whatever we want to execute with root privileges, right? So uh, you can see that it's just removing uh, the following item. And this is, of course, a PowerShell command. So it removes uh, all files uh, with the extension dot log. OK, so what can we do next? Well, we now need to modify or we now need to check and see whether uh, this particular cleanup.ps1 
or PowerShell script can be modified by anyone really because we are pretty much the lowest, uh, we pretty much have the lowest privileges. So that can be done with the access check utility. So I'll just copy this string here because again, I'd want to type in the accept EULA as well as the other options. So I'll head over into the privesk directory, which is under the root of the C drive, as we already know. So privesk, uh, and we have uh, the access uh, check utility, which I've already covered how to use. Uh, so I can say access uh, chk.exe, and I can paste that in there, and we can hit enter, and that will tell us the permissions uh, that we have, right? So you can see uh, read and write permissions for that PowerShell script. And of course, we have the ability to uh, to make changes to the file. We can append data. We can add a subdirectory. Uh, we can delete, uh, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that means we can modify. Now, the recommended modification here is that we add a line. So we can use echo and say, you know, we want to add the following line, which is uh, a line uh, that will execute a um, interpreter payload that I've already generated and I'll upload in a few seconds. And we're appending that to the actual PowerShell script. And it says right over here that this uh, scheduled task runs every minute. Okay, so what I've done here is I've already generated a meterpreter payload uh, with MSF Venom. So you can see it right over here, shell.exe. So I'll transfer it first before I do anything else. So I'll just close that channel and I'll go back into meterpreter and I'll head over into the temp directory. So, uh, you know, temp, there we are. And uh, let me just hit enter there, PWD under temp. All right, so I have uh, the WinPs executable, which in this case will not need because uh, whenever we run WinPs, we run it with our, current priv uh, with, our, with our current privileges and it really is difficult to identify uh, scripts uh, or executables that are running uh, with system privileges because we are, on, we are an unprivileged user. All right, so I'll say upload and this is stored uh, under um, home. I can type that incorrectly. So home, Kali, and under documents, I have a folder called trihackme and Windows Privesk, and we are uploading shell.exe. All right, so now that we have that done, we can set up the handler with Metasploit, and I already have a resource script that does that. So cat handler.rc, the, the only thing I need to modify is my actual um, VPN IP. So I'll go to the interface tunnel zero and I'll copy that there because it does change from occasion. So I'll now modify handler.rc here and I'll get rid of this IP. So let me just get rid of that now. And I'll paste that in there. And the port that I'll be listening on is port 1234. The payload is Windows X64. So it's a 64-bit interpreter payload for Windows. So I'll write and quit. And then I can say MSF console r handler handler.rc. Okay, so that'll set up the handler for us so that we get a connection immediately once the um, the actual scheduled task runs and, uh, you know, consequently executes the cleanup PowerShell script, which will then execute our shell.exe payload. All right, so now that that is done, we actually need to head over into the DevTools directory. So I'll just take a step back here and we can head over into DevTools. There we go. And we can now say echo, you know, and then specify, as it says here, uh, the path to that executable that we would like the script to execute with system privileges. And in my case, uh, it is under temp, and uh, I need to make sure that that is case sensitive. So temp and shell.exe, and we are pending that, right? So we are pending this to, and uh, in some cases, you need to, you, you might need to specify the absolute path. So I'll actually do that now. So C and uh, under dev tools, so DevTools and the name of the script is cleanup.ps1 or PowerShell. All right, so we'll hit enter. And uh, in this case, oh yeah, I actually forgot uh, we're currently in Meterpreter. So I'll just, uh, you know, run this within the shell or a, you know, standard Windows command prompt, All right? So I'll just uh, copy that there and hit enter. There we are, fantastic. So I can now say type and uh, clean up .ps1. And there we are, you can see that it's uh, it's added that line there. So it'll now execute shell.exe after every one minute. And it looks like it's been executed. And uh, we can see that we have a stage being sent. And we should receive an elevated interpreter session. So, you know, sysinfo. 
and uh, get use ID, enter authority system, get privs, pretty much have the highest privileges on the system. So yeah, that's how to exploit uh, misconfigured schedule tasks in order to elevate your privileges. As I said, just to summarize, there are two requirements. Number one, you must have the ability to modify the script uh, or the executable, if you will. And secondly, the script or executable needs to be running with system privileges in order for you to, uh, to essentially obtain the privileges associated with the execution of that script or that executable. All right, so that is done. And we have covered scheduled tasks. We can now move on to uh, insecure uh, GUI apps. And then we'll head over to startup apps, token impersonation, which I'll cover in one video. So we're looking at about, you know, um, after scheduled tasks, probably three videos, and we should be done with Windows privilege escalation. I've already covered bypassing UAC uh, and actually uh, did that video in the form of a presentation to a conference uh, that I was presenting. So you can actually take a look at that. And I've uh, already covered kernel exploitation and how to look for kernel exploits. So this will really just wind up the Windows privilege escalation section. Uh, and of course, uh, later on, I'll be adding videos if necessary, as per your own requirements, if you actually want me to cover a particular technique. But this was quite uh, comprehensive in regards to the various, uh, you know, techniques and procedures, as well as vectors that you can utilize uh, on a modern version of Windows, right? So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. If you want to reach out to me, you can do so via my Twitter. The link to that is in the description section. If you would also you know, like to reach out to me as well as the Hackersploit, com the Hackersploit community, you can do so via our Discord server. And that uh, the link to that is in the description as well. Uh, if you want to support the channel and what we're doing here, you can support us via Patreon. The link to that is also in the description. And thank you uh, very much once again. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated and this is a formal thank you. So thank you Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.